In our next video, we're going to look at something really interesting. And yeah, some people can argue that physics isn't very interesting, very boring, but I think it's very interesting. And uh, here we're going to look at the kinetic energy of a whole mole of gas. Now, in the previous video, we looked at the kinetic energy of a single molecule of gas, which is equal to 3 halves kT. Of course, then you can say that the kinetic energy for one mole is equal to 3 over 2 kT times Avogadro's number. And k times Avogadro's number is equal to the gas constant R. So we can say that the kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 2 R times the temperature. Hmm. Now, take a look at that. That should look very familiar. Hmm. Let's take a look at the internal energy of a gas again. The change or the internal energy of a gas, or the change in the internal energy of a gas, is equal to N C sub V delta T. Now let's say that we do this for one mole. For one mole, the change in internal energy is equal to C sub V times delta T. And so assuming that we start from zero temperature and go all the way up to its current temperature, then we can say that the internal energy of a gas U is simply equal to C sub V times T. Now if we look at this equation, and we look at this equation, then we can say, well, is C sub V equal to 3 over 2 R? And the answer is, for a monatomic gas, it is. C sub V is equal to 3 over 2 R for a monatomic gas. The reason why C sub V equals 3 over 2 R for a monatomic gas is that the only place that a monatomic gas can get its energy from is through translational motion. And of course, translational motion is kinetic energy. It cannot get any energy from rotational motion like a diatomic or a triatomic molecule can. So if we only consider the translational motion of a gas, we can then see that the kinetic energy for one mole, and I should write one mole here, one mole, is equal to 3 over 2 RT, which is the same as C sub VT for a monatomic gas, which is also 3 over 2 R times T. So this can be written as 3 over 2 R times T for a monatomic gas. And so what I'm doing here is showing you the similarity or the fact that it's the exact same thing. The kinetic energy of a mole of gas is equal to the internal energy of a gas due to its translational motion only. Very interesting. Now, if we now take a look at the equation PV equals nRT, which is the ideal gas equation, and then we say, well, what would this look like for one mole? This equation then becomes N equals 1, and we can write that PV equals RT. So if we now multiply both sides of that equation by 3 halves, we can then say that 3 over 2 PV is equal to 3 over 2 RT, which is equal to the kinetic energy of the gas, which is equal to the internal energy of the gas. So another way of looking at this, you could say that the internal energy of a gas is equal to 3 halves PV, or U equals 3 over 2 PV. So here are some very interesting relationships. First of all, it shows that the internal energy of a gas is simply there Due, its, due to its translational motion. Now, of course, for diatomic and triatomic molecules, there's additional degrees of freedom, as we call it. There's additional ways in which a molecule can rotate around and therefore have additional kinetic energy. But only for translational motion, you can see the similarity between the internal energy of a gas and the kinetic energy of a gas. And then if it also take a look at the ideal gas equation and assume the ideal gas equation for one mole, we can then say that PV equals RT, multiply both sides by 3 over 2, and we can also see that the internal energy of a gas is equal to 3 over 2 times the pressure times its volume. Very interesting equations, uh, but, you know, again, it helps in the understanding of how these equations hang together and how the gas molecules obtain their energy through their translational and, of course, rotational motion. And that's how you look at the kinetic energy of a mole of gas.